Mr. Beat presents Supreme Court Briefs. Piscataway, New Jersey, March 7th, 1980. A teacher catches two students smoking in a bathroom of Piscataway High School. Since smoking in the bathroom, perhaps obviously, went against school rules, the teacher took the two girls to the principal's office. Assistant Vice Principal Theodore Choplick interrogated the two girls. One of them admitted to smoking. The other girl, a 14-year-old freshman, later known simply by her initials to protect her privacy, T. T.L.O. denied that she had been smoking. Choplick thought T.L.O. was lying, of course. He forced her to come into his office so he could search through her purse. Inside the purse, he found a pack of cigarettes. Next to the cigarettes, in plain view, were rolling papers, which he thought might be used for marijuana, so he kept searching the purse. He also found a pipe, empty plastic bags, a bunch of $1 bills rolled up together, an index card that apparently listed students who owed T.L.O money, and even two letters seeming to show that TLO was dealing marijuana. Choplick reported what he found to the police, giving what he found in the purse to them as evidence. TLO later voluntarily confessed to police that she had been selling marijuana at the high school. Based on the confession and seized evidence, the state of New Jersey charged TLO with possession of marijuana in the Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court of Middle Sex County. However, her lawyer argued the evidence from the purse shouldn't be allowed in court as it was obtained illegally since this went against the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. That's a law known as the exclusionary rule, by the way. The court allowed the evidence to be used anyway and found her guilty, sentencing her to probation for one year. She was also fined $1,000 and expelled from school, but TLO appealed to the Superior Court Court of New Jersey, but it agreed with the lower court, saying the exclusionary rule did not apply to school officials and they could certainly search a student's personal property. So, TLO appealed again, this time to the New Jersey Supreme Court, who reversed the lower decision and sided with TLO. It argued the Fourth Amendment does apply to searches and seizures made by school officials in public schools, so this time New Jersey appealed. And the Supreme Court agreed to hear oral arguments on March 28th, 1984, and then again on October 2nd, 1984. The big question was, does the exclusionary rule apply to searches conducted by school officials in public schools? The court said yes. Why, yes, it does. But they sided with New Jersey. It was six to three. Yep. So the court held that public school officials may conduct searches without a warrant as long as there is a, quote, reasonable suspicion. According to legal standards, a reasonable suspicion is less than probable cause, but it is still more than a hunch. It has to be based on specific facts. In the case of TLO, her having cigarettes was relevant to whether or not she was telling the truth. And Mr. Choplick had a reasonable suspicion to think cigarettes were in her purse since the teacher took her straight to his office. In addition, after Mr. Choplick opened the purse, the other stuff was in plain view. Plain view is a well understood exception to the warrant requirement of the Fourth Amendment. So Mr. Choplick was not going against the Fourth Amendment and that evidence could be used in court. In his dissent, Justice William Brennan argued that Mr. Choplick's search did go too far. Quote, when he opened the purse, he discovered the pack of cigarettes. At this point, his search for evidence of the smoking violation was complete, unquote. Brennan said continuing to rummage through TLO's purse was a violation of her privacy. Regardless, New Jersey v. TLO is the case that makes it clear that as long as there is a reasonable suspicion, the principal can search your backpack at school, kid. So don't get any ideas, you hear? I'll see you for the next Supreme Court case, jury. What do you think? Do you agree with the Supreme Court in this case? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what Supreme Court case you want me to cover next. And I'll be downtown in Atlanta, Georgia on March 19th for a meetup with Step Back History and the Cynical Historian and Heimler History. If you can join us, please fill out the survey in the description of this video. And here's my monthly shout out to my Patreon supporters who donate at least $15 or more a month at the George Washington level. That's 20 bucks a month or higher. I've got Eric B. Woolman. 
Coleman, Matt Standish, Alicia Solberg, Austin Rudolph, El Casper, Nick Everett, and Sean Connett. At the Grover Cleveland level at 15 bucks a month, Andrew Snyder, CJ Cavi, John Johnson, Kit Walker, and Zachary F. Parker. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and thank you for watching.